Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the new Flesh Eater Quartz Battle Tome that came out a while ago. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm really interested in this book. Uh, some things I predicted came true, some things didn't. You know, but that's par for the course, really, with these kind of books. Um, overall, some really interesting stuff. Uh, now, just just to let everyone know, I'm not going to be covering every little thing in the book, like every war scroll or unit ability, because uh, that's already been done so much. You can you can already, I think everyone's pretty much seen it if they really wanted to. So I'm not going to bore anyone with more of that. Um, I'll, but I do want to cover some things about the book that I, I really wanted to talk about. And also some things that I think it might be saying about the future, quote-unquote. Quote so, the new Battle Tome overall. Well, um, yeah, this is honestly one of the better ones I've seen in a, in a very long time. Like, it was, uh, like I, I really feel GW has, after years now, finally, like, landed on, like, the proper layout and format for, for uh, Age of Sigmar Battle Tomes. Like, it, they just, I just love how the book itself, it's got, like, just with the artwork, with the, how it's structured, what's included. Just, they're, they're just really hitting a good stride of creating value um to the to the flesh eater courts as an army as a whole like i what some of the really good things about this book are the great uh additions to the lore itself like i feel like it's uh the the they're finally they're finally getting to the point where they can define what the flesh eater courts are beyond just you know crazy cannibals like i really i really feel they finally reached that at that point um the, the book also has a lot of the new model editions but we already knew that but i just i just feel it bears repeating that uh, this is easily one of the best uh, uh like army editions of to any army in age of sigmar in a very long time like this is one of the better range refreshes we i think i've seen of the, in the whole game like it's just it's just yeah really out of the park there um they really uh now the play styles i now and the, and as for the gaming itself i feel like that's a little bit more mixed from what i've definitely been seeing and also as it's kind of happening on the tabletop as well um but i, I think but to be but i'll get more into that in a second now one thing i feel that does that i think needs its own talking point is the lore change-ups like i think i think um i've always felt that the the flesh eater courts had some of the best like overarching lore of any of the of the armies in the game really like at least in the top five like it just really kind of combined them with a cool concept that you could easily mold to like a like you know your own narrative for you for your own personal army but also that you know kind of had that whole like gothic tragedy that i i feel a lot of people connect with and the flesh eater courts had that in spades um and i feel and one of the great things about the new book is it doesn't take away anything that was established in the previous books but it takes what was there and enhances it but also expanding it in different and interesting ways like okay like one of the biggest things that i've been saying is we finally have context of asheron oh and by the way i think i'm finally saying that right i'm uh, forgive me i think maybe i've been butchering his name from this point uh, so i hope i'm doing it right now but anyway it finally gave the proper context with asheron how he relates to nagash the fact that he's technically back on nagash's side kind of even though it's a little bit it's a little bit ambig ambiguous in the book itself whether he's really bat like complete once again completely loyal to nagash or maybe he's i don't know maybe playing dumb maybe playing the long game a little bit um but i really feel that it really gave like really helped fleshed out his character and uh in, in, and i and i really liked how they even gave like a new like well and I don't want to say new because it's a little it, again with anything with the flesh eater cores there's a lot of ambiguity but there is there is an idea that there's there's a different telling of his origin the the origin before where he rebelled against Nagash was cursed and had to be easily be locked up when he started going crazy that is still perfectly plausible but the new but also an alternative backstory of him discovering Nagash's plan to enact the Necroquake rebelling against them and then being put down when he tried to stop him that also i actually think has some interesting things too because it does it does paint a very different picture of asheron before he was cursed like perhaps he perhaps where this could be an idea of not so much just a a power grab betrayal which was implied in the original but more like you know like a, a noble character 
you know, trying to trying to stop a great evil, be losing, and then ended up being once again enslaved to the master that did it to him. But that's an interesting thing too. But again, it's a little bit ambiguous on whether e either of these are even are even true. But anyway, I think that's a real. I, I really like the direction they're going with. I love the more when they put a little bit of moral ambiguity in, in death because sometimes I feel death can be just a little bit too. Uh, just a little bit too, you know, like, you know, neutral evil too much a lot because I, I get it, it's death, but I kind of feel like, okay, so we got the evil vampires and the evil bone guys and the really evil ghosts with the crazy ghouls. Like, it can, it can a little bit of balance can sometimes be good. Um, you know, you know, they're not chaos. They don't necessarily have to be like that. And I know in lore they're not like that, but sometimes it can come off that way, especially in the battle tomes. Um, also, I like how they're finally expanding more on the courts too. Again, giving a greater context of their of their history, their backstory, uh, really giving a lot more flavor to what they are. Like you know, the whole the, with like Hollow Morn and the Morgant with you know their knightly courts and like how they interact with the other Grand Alliance, like the other armies and the Grand Alliances. It's just yeah, they, basically they just took what was there and just gave them a little bit more character and fixing that up too. Also, they finally fixed up some uh, like some vagaries on the transformation of ghouls like like for example it was always um like for example there it, it, it does outright state that there are multiple ways people can become ghouls like the most common way is feeding on the blood of either asheron or a ghoul king while you're under the delusions of the spell but uh, now just just to clarify too that is how you be turned into like ghouls to they, it, it act, the book outright basically shows that you can actually be under the delusion of the flesh eater courts, but not be a, a ghoul per se. Like for example, like you can be under the delusion and believe their shared delusion and see what they see, but you could still be human or ogre or elf or whatever but in order to become a ghoul you need to like actively like you know either drink the blood of a ghoul king or be saturated in heavy amounts of, of you know their crazy death magic so there there actually is some interesting things too because from like a narrative perspective i can actually you know it can be kind of interesting where you know you can have people who are under the sway of a court but you know they're still technically regular humans like that's a really interesting thing too because it was always there was always this thing where if you were under the court sway you're a ghoul but now it's a little bit more it's a little bit there's a there's a little bit more vagary to that don't get me wrong though the end point of being in a court too long is you become a ghoul that's kind of the end point but i'm just saying it, it just leads to some narratives that i think are interesting so some things I really liked about the book too. Well, I, I, as I mentioned before, I really liked the greater unit variety. Like one thing I never, that was, I think I, I never really liked about uh, the original books is that there just weren't enough units in the books. Like, again, they were basically just using the same kits just to expand into multiple units. It was so bad. Like, I think they were even using like a unit champion as a special character. I think uh, uh, the crypt gas courtier i think he's i think they did they literally just came in the box set for the other ghouls now there's a, there's enough unit variety that you know it look they look like a proper army now like it, i'm not saying now they're they're far from being the most numerous army but it's it's there uh again really enhanced lore much better off here too they just really just took the, the lore that exists before and just refined it more so now they are in my opinion they're a proper faction in the grand scheme of the narrative Narrative, not just you know a random just a bunch of random idiots just running around attacking people there's a more of a narrative thread with the ghouls even going back into like say like the age of myth like there's a they they have a part to play in the grand scheme of things that's what i like um also uh some other things i liked is they finally toned down feeding frenzy as people probably as you've probably seen from other people talking about the book feeding frenzy is no longer attacked twice it's basically uh it's basically just if you have enough uh like what were they called like noble deed points i think it was called uh if you have enough of those uh, if a hero has enough of those it creates like an aura that just gives plus one to your attack characteristic while it's good i do think it, now I, I that is still good it's nowhere near as as efficient as feeding frenzy like attacking twice is like almost always better than plus one attack in most cases so and also you need to get a certain number of points for it to even go off in the first place so it's definitely a tone down in that regard um now that can also be a good and a bad thing depending on who you're talking to because some people could say like well some units that barely changed in this book 
were really only really good offensively because of feeding frenzy and they didn't really cha change that much so in some ways a lot of units got gutted but you know that's that's a bit of a that's a more nuanced take that i think uh, i don't really think i, I I'm, I'm set to go into just yet um also i much i much more prefer their their summoning mechanic now i feel it's much more interactive um before i thought it was just a little bit too bare bones okay you just spend a command point you summon a unit on it was just ugh. it was just it was too easy Easy. it was too flat uh it just lacked imagination and i feel like it uh, in some cases it was a little bit too gamey um now now it's i feel like it let they're more in line with other death factions like Something that people often mixes and misses is that death doesn't really have summoning the way some other armies do. Like for example, uh, uh, for example, uh, like you know, chaos armies like you know, Heat Knights of Slanesh or Blades of Corn, they have summoning in that they can bring on completely new units. Death armies they don't bring back new, they don't bring in new units. They bring back old units that have been destroyed. You know, as you know, as people refer to it as recursion. You know, they're they're not about bringing on new stuff. They're about healing up stuff that's already there, and if it does die, bringing it back. This this summoning mechanic, where they spend, where they can blow out their entire all their points to bring back a unit at half strength who can then heal up, the, and also healing units that are already on the table uh, much more effectively, this is much more in line with the other death factions. Now, some may say this is better, some may say this is worse. Uh, I think, if I'm being objective, I think this is probably a worse summoning mechanic because it, requir it requires more uh, mechanics and it it's a lot harder to get off. But I think that's also a good thing because, again, I think it's a, a toning down of summoning for what it was because that, that summoning mechanic was very much, you know, early second edition. You know, it was just like super easy to do. Now it's more about, you know, you got to work for your summoning. So I, that I'm fine with. Um, even though I know some people might disagree, uh, I, think, I think we'll get used to it. Also, uh, I definitely like there's definitely more defined army abilities. Uh, they're definitely going with the new trend of battle tomes in that, see, before it was all about, uh, you know, there was different, like, uh, like different things were like, well, this is, this is a little, this is, okay, I was about to say that they don't do that anymore, and that's not true, because, for example, like, Heaton Knights, uh, Heaton Knights of Slanesh basically are, like, three armies in one book or orc war clans are basically three armies in one book and all have unique uh uh you know spells and artifacts and everything uh what i was trying to say was this army is like some more recent armies in that you you basically don't like they're they're not divided up by sub faction or or sub allegiance they're just they're divided up by keywords like for so for example there's all the artifacts for court chairs there's all the artifacts for arch regents so there's there there uh, so basically the sub factions of the flesh eater courts like the gristle gore the hollow morn they're just again they're just single abilities that apply to everyone but they all have access to all the different to all to the same charts for getting artifacts and command abilities and uh, spells um personally i think I think I prefer that if I'm being honest because it just makes things it doesn't lock any like it just doesn't lock anyone out so for example your gristle gore army has all the same trinkets as the hollow morn and vice versa so I, I just feel it's probably a little bit more easier uh even if even if sometimes it can it can just even if it does maybe affect the flavor of the army a bit but you know I feel that's a that's a small price to pay um also on top of this again as bears repeating great new sculpts like they they there it's going to be a long time before i feel an army gets a refresh to the extent the flesh eater course did like they they have some of the best new kits in the game right now it's not even really close so uh yeah a lot, lot of good stuff here from uh from the at least from a, at least from the development and presentation side of the army now uh as with all as with everything you have to look at the good and the bad so um one thing uh that i think i think i want to talk about is and there may and this is a this is a subject i think i'm going to talk about more maybe in a separate video because i think this 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 is something i want to talk about in much more depth i'm noticing a growing trend of of greatly increasing army complexity and how the rules work like there's a great there's a there's a lot more things that, like uh when it comes to unit like unit and army construction like for example the new system of of the of the flesh eater courts it's all it's generally built around the idea of like the noble deed points that's what i'm calling them and uh, again, as some people pointed out, while it's not the worst 
thing in the world. It, it can create issues where, you know, you have to constantly keep track of what every single hero is at at any given point. Uh, you have to keep, you have to be cognizant of the ways to ma maximize them. A lot of abilities are very, are like a lot of abilities and unit interactions are becoming increasingly complex. Um, you know, there's a lot more like in like sub factions and intricacies in the army itself. Like, I just kind of feel that um, like it, it, this will also depend on how the new edition comes out because r right now I feel like third edition is at a good point. Like, it's balancing that that whole like com like easy to easy to understand but enough complexity to be interesting. Um, but the thing is, at the at the current pace that they're going, especially with armies like Flesh Eater Quartz or Cities of Sigmar. Um, I'm kind of, I have some concerns with how they're going to, uh, the, how this complexity will either increase or decrease come, come the new edition, which we're all expecting to come out next year. Like if fourth edition ends up being even more complex than third, uh, I'm kind of having a, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like we might be running into some issues of like, you know, earlier fantasy and 40 K where, you know, the complex, you know, core rules mixing in with the complex army rules are just kind of becoming a little much for people, you know? Um, now, I'm not saying that it's a problem yet, but I just ho I'm just i just wondering where this trend is going. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring is, um, I feel like they didn't really do enough to help some units. Um, like, case in point right here, like, there are some very good stuff in this book, don't get me wrong, but it's all, but it's very much favors some units overall. Like, some units from the last book, like, you know, like the Ghoul Kings, like the Foot Ghoul Kings, mind you, or like the Ghouls, uh, I, I, I'm not saying they're bad, but I kind of get, I, I kind of feel like they didn't really do much to fix their problems from the last book. Like, you know, a lot of people felt, you know, ghouls were lacking a little bit, uh, with the last book because, you know, they were, didn't really do a lot of damage. They died quickly. They were mostly just, you know, like roadblocks and, you know, people kind of were saying like, well, ghoul kings don't really have a place, especially next to the, like, the Arch Regent, which is just flat out better, and, uh, you know, like, there was, like, why would I, why do you, why would you ever bring a Terror Geist and a Zombie Dragon where a Ghoul King on a Terror Geist or a Zombie Dragon is just objectively better in almost every case, and this carried over to this book, too, because, uh, like, just, just to put it into perspective, like, there's a lot more stuff in the book here with, you know, things like, uh, you know, like, uh, like, uh, uh, steed, uh, what, what were those, um, like, you know, certain, uh, mount traits, uh, can't believe I forgot how to say that, but, like, for example, there's certain very good mount traits, but they only apply to, like, the ghoul king, uh, with the zombie dragon or terror geist, so they even miss, they, so they even miss out on that, and they're just flat out worse, because they, a lot of the new ways of, like, you know, re-rolling hits with your terror geist, or buffing your zombie dragon, they're only good for them, so, once again, a unit that was already good in the last book is just still good in this book and those units are that were you know inefficient in the last book are still kind of bad like and then and then again this also leads to an, another age-old problem of auto includes like i feel in this book too once again you know the ghoul king on a terror geist i feel like that's still very much an auto include uh, you know, certain, like, you know, I know that the people have been pointing out there's different courts of delusions you pick at the start of the game that affect your whole army, but again, there's some very obvious takers, you know, for example, like, the Crusading Army or the Feast Day Grand Illusions, they just seem, like, just objectively better than the other ones, like, I, I don't, like, I don't know, like, uh, as some people pointed out, like, why would you take, let's say, like, you know, like, uh, the Royal Hunt, when okay yeah sure you you get a, you get a buff against monsters but like it's doesn't really it just kind of seems way too niche like niche compared to the like the real good ones like crusading army you know or like once again there's certain like for example there's certain like artifacts or command abilities that are just flat out better like a lot of people are pointing out cruel taskmaster just seems like like it, that command ability just seems so much so objectively better uh, why would you never not take it, you know, it, it's once again, like, GW still, like, still sometimes has issues with properly balancing some of its, some of its, uh, you know, uh, like, options in their books, and I, I, and I understand that it can be hard, like, there's just, you can only, it's hard to balance so many different variables, like, I've even heard some people say they should just, like, take out things, like, the, the spell lores, just take them out completely, because it's impossible, they just can't seem to balance them, just have just spells on the war scrolls, just keep those, 
I don't feel I agree with that, but I do get the I do get the sentiment where from where that's coming from. In that, well, if you have these big spell tables and these big tables full of artifacts, but one's so obviously the good one, you're always going to take it. What's the point of even having the others? You're never going to use them. You're basically crippling yourself not taking the obvious one. Like, and uh, and once again, and this one goes without repeating. The book, the the rules uh, definitely favor the new units. Like, you know, as I've said with the ghouls and the and uh, the ghoul king on foot. Uh, things like, you know, the new stuff like the Gore Warden or the Royal Decapitator, you know, or, you know, the Morbag Knights, they're just, again, they're just very obviously designed and pointed to be the obvious takes over the old stuff. Like, you can still take the old stuff, they still have a place, but it, it doesn't, it definitely, it definitely doesn't seem subtle that they really want to make the new stuff the stuff you really want to take. Like, uh, I mean, it kind of goes without saying here. Like, I think a lot of people say they'll take a gore warden every day rather than, you know, a ghoul king on foot, you know? Honestly, and uh, once again, the ghoul, which, and my poor ghoul king, I really wish he was a lot better in that book. But again, I feel like, why would you ever take him over an arch regent, you know? Like, oh, well, he can assassinate ca characters now because he gets a bonus against heroes. Uh, okay, but, you know the flesh eater courts are so or he will never survive long term uh to get it probably in combat nine out of ten times like you there's this i just feel there's never a reason not to put him on a terror geist but whatever that's just these are just some concerns i have and i think i'll go into more detail on the broader concerns another time so overall thoughts um go, the go, i would say thumbs up for this army i feel like it has it has great lore much much more developed uh, army construction and army rules great new scalps and uh, I think I honestly think they're overall they're pretty competitive too on the tabletop now we'll we won't know until we get some more data on it but from what I'm seeing they're reasonably they're reasonably competitive like I think they're either I would say they're probably about roughly the same as they were competitively from the last book maybe slightly above it uh, because let, let's be honest here too, fleshier courts were really hurting for a while because they they used to, they started off like with their feet their initial feeding frenzy. Some people saying they were too strong. Then feeding frenzy got nerfed, and then you know like you, their uh, other armies got so much better that their lack of durability just meant they were dying left and right. And then they kind of got left getting left in the dust by other death factions. Well, now they're kind of they're kind of more on par with everything else. Um, I do again I do have some concerns about. Uh, about how not necessarily what about this book but just like trends that I'm seeing with greater and greater complexity with the rule sets for the armies um, I just really wondering how this is going to work in the long run with the rest of third edition and into fourth edition and also I kind of really wish they maybe just tried a little harder to balance like to do like to internally balance uh, the, the units in the book where you know like I kind of feel like you know like things like the, the new knights are just you know so much better than things let's say like the crypt flares which i'm not saying are bad but you you're never you're probably always going to take those over them in most situations sorry about that something in the background um uh and uh, on top of that too like you know there's certain like artifacts and command abilities that are just clearly the better takes you know and again you've got things where like the new units are just basically out basically designed to outclass some of them the old stuff because you know they want you to buy the new stuff but Anywho, uh, I think still, that aside, I still feel that uh, overall the book is still very good. There's great new scalps. They're definitely more, I feel they're more competitive than they were before. They're more in line with more modern standards of battle tome construction and, and how the rules work, especially with summoning. Um, and I feel like if you're looking to get a new army, I feel, yeah, Flesh Eater Courts are, a very, are I think, are... are a very good place right now and i think they're going to be good at least for the foreseeable future so uh yeah anyway i hope you enjoyed uh this video and uh yeah i hope you have a great day H happy gaming